Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, in this video, I want to take a, a further look at a device we've taken a look at in previous videos called the Tiny Pilot KVM. Now, in previous videos, the first video I showed uh, the Tiny Pilot KVM uh, as it was when uh, Michael over at Tiny Pilot sent me the device to take a look at. Uh, in the second video, we expanded it a little bit by adding uh, a physical KVM to it so that we could have access to multiple other uh, remote devices. And in this video, I want to take that a step further and show you how to, in an unofficial way, uh, this is how I've come up with uh, this solution. This is not officially supported by Tiny Pilot, uh, but I will have that video coming up soon. But what I want to show is how to access your Tiny Pilot KVM over IP using a remote domain name. Now, there are some things that you're going to need in order for this to work. Obviously, first things first, you'll need a Tiny Pilot KVM. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got uh, the, the just a simple version. I say simple. It doesn't matter if you've got the Tiny Pilot Pro like I showed in the original video, or if you've got the expanded version like I showed with uh, the additional ports on it. Uh, either of those will work. It'll just be a matter of how many devices you'll have remote access to. Uh, after that, you'll need a domain name. I buy all of my domain names from Porkbun. Uh, however, they're not sponsoring this video. I just, I'm a big fan of Porkbun. Uh, they're a great company uh, and their prices are really, really reasonable. Uh, next, uh, in my opinion, everybody who's doing self-hosting should use Cloudflare. Uh, I'm going to do all of my domain DNS stuff through Cloudflare in this video. So if you want to use that, go ahead. If not, I can't help you. That, that's something that I always encourage. I've been encouraging people to use Cloudflare for almost a decade now. Uh, so, so definitely check out Cloudflare if you haven't already. Uh, the other thing that you're going to need is uh, some sort of reverse uh, reverse proxy. Uh, I'm going to be using Nginx Proxy Manager because it's easy to use, it's easy to set up, and it's easy to configure. So uh, once you've got your, your tiny pilot, your domain, your uh, Cloudflare, and uh, your Nginx Proxy Manager all set up, uh, I will have links to all of that stuff in the description. Uh, once you've got all that set up, then we can move over and get started. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look. So here we are on my desktop, and here we are. We're on port number one uh, with my tiny pilot. <laughs> And of course, we, you can see up here at the top uh, that we're using tinypilot.local. Uh, importantly, though, we need to make sure that we see that there is an HTTPS in the URL. That's going to come into play later. Before we really get started on any of this, there are some things that we'll want to make sure that we take a look at first. Uh, first thing, we want to come over here to system and security. Uh, make sure that you've got a username and password set up on this. Now, here's the thing. Uh, by default, Tiny Pilot's OS does not come with fail to ban installed or any kind of additional security measures. So make sure that you've got a username and password set up. If you wanted to set up fail to ban, I'm sure you could, but that's outside the scope of this video. So once you've got your username and password set up here, uh, you can go ahead and click save. Uh, then we can come over to here, make sure that you go to updates and make sure you have the most recent version of the operating system. That's going to play a key role in our next setting. So we'll go ahead and come over to here. We'll go to system uh, over here. We'll go to video settings. And uh, this is where you can actually change uh, your, your FPS and things like that to get uh, the best possible experience for your, uh, for your remote access, whether it's on the .local domain or it's on your own custom domain. Uh, feel free to jump in here and mess with these sliders until they suit your needs uh, the best way possible. So once we've got all of that, then we can actually move into the setup process here. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually come over here to uh, to Cloudflare. And what I want to do is set up a new record. Uh, what I'm going to do is change this to CNAME. Um, now, when I was talking to Michael at Tiny Pilot KVM, uh, he told me that uh, if we're going to set up remote, we definitely shouldn't set up remote dot yourdomain.com or something similar like that. That's easy to guess. Uh, you know, his uh, the 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 official supported method is to have a domain a subdomain that looks more like that. Uh, that is that is not going to be easily guessed. Of course, you'll have to to write that down or save that somewhere so you can access it remotely later. But just know that you want to make sure that your subdomain or the domain name you use to access this remotely isn't something super easy to get access to. Uh, so what I'm going to do, instead of using remote like that, uh, what I'm going to do is just make this remote. Uh, again, I'm clever, and that's what I decided to do. So I'm going to go ahead and type in at, and what we're going to notice when I type in at is it's going to change this from target uh, to dbtech.xyz. So I'm going to say copy this uh, like so. I'm going to switch this from proxy to DNS only and click save. 
So once we've got that set up, the next thing I'm gonna do is come over to Nginx Proxy Manager, and I wanna add a new proxy host. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that domain name and hit enter. Now, normally, if you've watched my videos in the past, we normally leave this scheme as HTTP, um, but because uh, we've got a, a self-signed certificate on the Tiny Pilot, and we're using HTTPS in the URL up here, we wanna make sure that we change this to HTTPS there. The next thing we wanna do is uh, get the IP address of our Tiny Pilot. So I've got that pulled up here where I've just pinged that, that, local, I, or that local domain and I got 1.105. So I'll go ahead and type in 192.168.1.105. And the forward port, because we're, again, we're using uh, an SSL for this would be 443, like so. Next thing, I'm gonna block common exploits and WebSocket support. Then we'll go to SSL. We're going to request a new SSL. We're going to force, we'll use HTTP2. You can use HSTS if you've got that set up uh, and a DNS challenge if you want to do that as well. Uh, you can also agree uh, to the terms. You'll have to do that and then click save. Now we want to kind of just hang out, let this do its thing, uh, and then we can move on to the next steps. Okay, so here we've got uh, our IP address. We can see that right there. So what I want to do is come over here to this little hamburger menu and click edit go over to the SSL and just recheck those boxes. It's a known issue uh, with, uh, with Nginx Proxy Manager. And once we've got that, the next thing we wanna do is come over here and switch this from DNS only to proxy and click save. And then we can come back over and go ahead and click on a Wiimote. Uh, of course, you'll wanna change that to whatever your subdomain is, but whatever. Uh, here we can see that we've got wiimote.dbtech.xyz. Uh, it forwarded us to the login page, so that's good. Now it's asking for a username and password. Uh, but let's click that little icon up there and we'll see that we're using Cloudflare's SSL. So we're good to go there. So I'll go ahead and get logged in. Like so. And we'll give it a second for the page to load. And here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, no, I don't wanna save that. Um, but again, I'm on port one. So I do control, control two, like so. That should take us over to a Raspberry Pi desktop. Uh, like so, and if I do control, control three, uh, that's gonna take us over to uh, Mighty Mouse, and then port four got disconnected, um, but I'll go ahead and get that fixed later. That's not the point of this video. The point is that you can see we're on a remote URL, uh, and we're able to use our shortcut commands to my, to, to navigate between uh, multiple different systems using the Tiny Pilot KVM. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Really would help me out quite a bit. Uh, also, if you know anybody who's looking for a, a KVM over IP, show them this video or the videos that I've got linked in the description for more information about the Tiny Pilot KVM. I will have links to everything down there in the description. Now, again, this is the unofficial, unsupported method of remote access to your Tiny Pilot KVM system. I will have an officially supported version coming out very soon, uh, but I wanted to get this version out first uh, just because I think it's kind of a cool way to do it. Uh, and I haven't done enough research on the uh, supported version yet uh, to make a video about it. So that's coming soon. Definitely get subscribed if you want to know more about that. But I think for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.